Hello, welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your hosts, Jeff Martin and Mark Friedel from ChemPoint. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and as a podcast. For those watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and smash that like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We hope this will provide market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing market conditions. All right, Jeff, and our first couple stories this week are into uh, the the growing uh, industry and all the indexes being uh, very positive right now. And the first one is the um, U.S. Chemical Production Regional Index. And for the month of May, it was reported that it has raised uh, over four and a half percent. Now, that does follow uh, monthly declines in April and March. Um, a little bit smaller declines. Um, a lot of that had to deal with the um, winter storm outages that we saw on the Gulf Coast, but pretty significant boost in the month of May. And yes. similarly, the chemical activity barometer um, had gains as well. Now we're already posting, they're already posting uh, June numbers here, and it was nearly a 1% uh, gain in June, which follows a one and a quarter percent gain in May. So no surprise, the the industry is uh, going strong. Um, It's posting a nearly 20% gain year over year. Now, obviously last year this time, um, most of the industry was very hard hit by the pandemic shutdowns, Um, but all indications are very robust right now, very strong. The CAB looks like it may be peaking out right now, but all indications are uh, very robust growth right now. Yeah, it's amazing how strong all these metrics are when they've had all the supply chain issues and inventory issues uh, going on right now. So imagine if those weren't holding the industry back, what some of these numbers would look like. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, great point. And for sure, people are paying the price. Uh, As the demand goes up, so does the price. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Paying the prices right. Um, yeah, since it's the summertime, uh, oil refiners really look at the summers to really pump out a lot of fuel, a lot of gas um, at this time of year. So we see like in Houston and other uh, refining areas, there's been um, a lot of focus on trying to get as much output as possible. Um, especially right now, it's the very, very early in the hurricane season too. I was just looking at the news a few minutes ago. I, we got our first tropical storm hitting Florida. So um, the guys are really trying to cash in um, while they can to kind of um, impact the effects of that winter storm um, and then try to get uh, cash or ring the cash registers before the uh, hurricanes come in. Um, Kind of along the same line, we've seen uh, rig count go up by uh, three or four uh, rigs this week. And so the U.S. counts up to 475. Only one of those was in Texas, I guess. But um, a lot of that slow moving um, of adding new rigs is because we're still waiting on OPEC decision of whether or not they want to increase production. Yeah, it was pretty wild that OPEC has uh, delayed its meeting. Meanwhile, yeah, crude oil prices just continue to climb. Um, you know, I, th- I think they're solidly over $70 a barrel, closer to 75 with all indication and predictions that it's going to hit 100 before the end of the year. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if they still hit that hundred metric. I feel like people want to see it around that seventy-five, eighty-five dollars a barrel. Uh, it seems like everybody's making money then at that point too. Yeah, where it's 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 not too expensive, where it uh, prohibits and slows down the rest of the economy. Yep. Well, um, kind of in more uh, broad economic news, the uh, our chemical rail car traffic um, increased five percent year over year. Um, that's over last week. Um, and then it was down 3% um, if you look at a uh, year uh, from the week before. Um, and it's just slightly up over 2019 numbers. You know, so if we look at 2020 numbers, that was all uh, virus related. And so those were, numbers were way down, but it's about even with what we saw year to date um, with 2019. So I think uh, that's a good sign um, that those numbers are holding tight. And like we said, you know, that's a lot of impact on logistics. We know people are having trouble getting um, other packaging materials. So 
to see the that number hold steady with the current um, upheaval in the industry is, is good to see. Yeah, and it seems like when we talk about how 2021 is panning out as a year, comparing it to 2020 really doesn't do it any justice. So having that 2019 comparison seems to be a bit more universal. So it's good to see rail car traffic um, be relatively flat to 2019, despite all the disruptions that this year has has thrown at us. Right. All right, a handful of uh, um, uh, news releases this week for a company announcement. The first one being Dow Chemical. Um, they're, they announced uh, last week that they're going to be going through a number of, um, I guess, n- not, not major capital projects, but some minor capital projects to um, I- improve capacity, de-bottlenecking, and they're going to try to do a lot of these um, this year in, in 2021. Uh, most of this is going to be focused on, um, you, you know, expansions on products like silicone elastomers. And I felt like a lot of the material that they're going to be working on is going to be tied into sustainability, um, the, the EV car movement, um, lightweight automotive parts, things like that. And this is all going to be specific to Dow's consumer solutions business. Uh, so some some continued investment from Dow and really around um, improving improving efficiencies and expansions. Yeah, it really sounded like it was a Six Sigma expert's dream with all the de bottlenecking and efficiency improvements um, projects going on there. So I'm sure they have a lot of their teams working on that for sure. Oh yeah, consultants and Six Sigma black belts. Yeah. Uh, next up, Olin says it's agreed to purchase and resell all the chlorine produced by Ashta Chemicals in Ashta Beulah, Ohio. Uh, we've talked before how chlorine's really, really tight this summer um, and how um, most pools and a lot of uh, pers- people's pools in their backyards are having a lot of trouble getting chlorine products. So hopefully this eases some of that. Um, so Olin and uh, Ashta Chemicals said they're going to honor all the contracts that they already have. This is really just a logistics play and helps reduce the number of miles uh, that chlorine has to travel to get to their customers. And so it's also a uh, sustainability uh, aspects to it as well. So, um, you know, then they really hope this increases the availability and the security and the flexibility of the supply in, in, a, in a growing market. Yeah, anything to keep that price down, I suppose. This seems like it'll help. All right, moving on to mergers and acquisition news. Uh, last week, a news story broke about Selenese and ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil will be uh, selling its uh, TPV elastomers business to Selenese, um, and most of it's going to fall into the Santaprene brand name, a uh, very large and powerful brand uh, for this market segment. Um, along with it, the the product portfolio, the brands, the intellectual property, all production and commercial assets will be going along with it. So pretty big news, um, a bit of a, a divestiture for ExxonMobil and a good pickup by Selenese. Yeah, it seems as though this really builds out Selenese product line and a lot of these medical and mobility solutions. Yeah, for sure. Next up, uh, Solve has completed the acquisition of Bear's seed coating business. Uh, the acquisition includes the entire seed coating and seed enhancement product portfolio and R&D projects for the on-seed formulations of Bear's coatings um, in France. And so this is uh, for the whole, for international, um, for all their seed towing business in the US and Brazil as well. Um, yeah, the seed coating business, there's a lot of technology and growth in that area um, about different things that people can put on those seed coatings and the way those work and um, whether you apply it at the location or um, in plants to figure out the best way to put these seed coatings on. Um, and so the financial details of this deal weren't released, but it seems that's a really growing market. So there's that's a uh, lot of interest there. It's definitely growing. <laughs> nice one, Mark. <laughs> All right, moving on to um, Poland and Reichold. Uh, a few years ago, back in May of 2017, when those companies came together, um, they were uh, essentially their ownership was two private equity firms, Black Diamond and Invest Industrial. They essentially became 
partners when these two companies came together. Well, it looks like Black Diamond will become the sole owner of Poland Reichold after they're essentially agreeing to buy out all the shares from Invest Industrial. So they'll be the, the, the single owner moving forward um, and pretty big news. Um, I believe since 2017, when these companies came together and, and these two investment firms came in, there's been some substantial financial performance improvements. So my guess is Black Diamond is going to be paying a little bit of a premium here, but they're going to be essentially the sole owner moving forward when this deal closes. Yeah, so Black Diamond and Invest Industrial, those are two really big private equity players in the chemical market. You always reading about those two either buying something or selling something. It's um, They seem to be the 900-pound gorillas uh, in our industry when it comes to private equity. Yeah, those two, SK Capital, One Rock, they, they tend to get a lot of uh, a lot of nods in our in our uh, recording. Yep. Well, uh, all right. That's, that's it for this week's edition of Industry Reactions. We will return next week with a fresh batch of Industry Reactions. Until till then, stay safe. Thanks, everyone.